Good evening. I'm Pastor Fritz Fallon. I'm one of the pastors here on staff at Trinity Lansdale. And it's a joy to gather with you tonight on this holy Saturday where it is not yet Easter. And the quietness on this holy Saturday as we gather together in prayer, where we sing songs and raise our voices, as we hear God's word. Welcome. A copy of tonight's bulletin is available on our website, trinitylandstill.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the home page where you'll see a button that says bulletin where you can find a copy of tonight's worship service. Again, our website is trinitylandstill.com. If you're visiting us for the first time tonight, a special welcome to you. We are thankful that you're here. It is our prayer that you feel inspired, that you feel uh, God, God's presence with you, and that you leave this worship opportunity tonight knowing that you are God's beloved child. I want us to begin tonight with a moment of silence, but before we do that, you may hear, we have some microphones in the sanctuary that pick up the organ and the piano that hang from our ceilings, and so you may notice some additional noise this evening. We want you to know that uh, we are in the process of vaccinating over a thousand people in our uh, lobby and in our gymnasium. And so there are some other folks here that you may hear throughout the evening. We consider it a great honor and joy to partner with local businesses in bringing the vaccine to the residents of Montgomery County. And so we ask for your flexibility and for your patience, for your understanding if you do hear some other noises coming through our microphones tonight. But nonetheless, we gather together in worship, giving thanks to God for all of God's miracles in our life, from vaccines to researchers to doctors to nurses to first responders, and ultimately to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has died for our sins who sits in the tomb, and who we will celebrate tomorrow on Easter Sunday. We hope that you'll join us at one of our two services. The first at 7 a.m. in our circle driveway. We'll have chairs set up for you. Uh, 7 a.m. outside in our circle driveway, and at 9.30 a.m. here on our live stream. We have a beautiful string, uh, a string group that's going to be joining us as we worship God and we celebrate the resurrection but I invite you now to take a moment of silence as we meditate on this quote. Whenever the church finds itself living between the terror of Good Friday's horrible ending and the wonder of Easter Sunday's impossible homecoming, it recognizes what it is to be a people exiled on a long holy Saturday between denial and truth between despair and hope. Dance with gladness, once delight filled every breath. Now we sit among the ashes, all our dreams destroyed by death. All the willows bow in weeping, all the rivers rage and moan. As creation joins our pleading, God, do not leave us alone. God, who came to dwell among us, God, who suffered our disgrace, from your own 
own heart grieved and wounded come the riches of your grace come O Christ among the ashes come to wipe our tears away death destroyed and sorrow banished now and always come and stay let us pray together O oh god, god creator of heaven and earth grant that as the crucified body of your dear son was laid in the tomb and rested on this holy sabbath so may we may await, await with him, him the coming of the third day and rise with him to newness of life who now lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen amen a reading from job the 14th chapter a mortal born of a woman few of days and full of trouble comes up like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and does not last. Do you fix your eyes on such a one? Do you bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one can, since their days are determined like the number of their months is known to you, and you have appointed the bounds they cannot pass. Look away from them and desist, that they may enjoy like laborers their days. For there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease. Though its roots grows old in the earth, and its stump dies in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. But mortals die and are laid low. Humans expire, and where are they? As waters fail from a lake and a river wastes away and dries up, so mortals lie down and do not rise again. Until the heavens are no more, they will not awake or be roused out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol that you would conceal me with your wrath is past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If mortals die, will they live again? All the days of my service, I would wait until my release should come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm, one thir Psalm 31 responsively. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me. A strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you, for you are my, are my refuge. refuge. A reading from 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same intention. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin, so as to live the rest of your earthly life, no longer by human desires, but by the will of God. You have already spent enough time in doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, kerosene, and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that you no longer join them in the same excess of dismutation, and so they blasphemy. But they will have to give an accounting to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For that is the reason the gospel was proclaimed even to the dead, so that they had been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged. They might live in the spirit as God does. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in a rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the, that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away. He has been risen from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Here we are in that in-between time, the time between Good Friday and Easter, the time when the disciples were between crucifixion and sadness and resurrection and joy. The time between fear and despair and hope and excitement. So what were they doing during this in-between time? They were hiding in a locked room, hoping that they wouldn't be arrested and crucified next. And they stayed there until they saw Jesus. Meanwhile, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered that it be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. The in-between time. Jesus was in the tomb. The disciples were hiding in a locked room. The women were waiting for the Sabbath to end so they could anoint the body of Jesus. When I read this scripture passage, I kept being drawn to the line where Joseph of Arimathea asked for the body of Jesus. People today continue to ask for the body of Jesus, and we provide it. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. We partake of the body of Christ. Jesus no longer dwells in the tomb. Christ dwells within us. We are the body of Christ. We proclaim the mystery of faith when we say Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We know when Christ died, it was Good Friday. We know when Christ was risen, it was on Easter Sunday. But we do not know when Christ will come again. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in that in-between time. For the disciples, Jesus left on Good Friday and returned on Easter. For us, Jesus left when he ascended into heaven, and he will return at his appointed time, whenever that may be. In the meantime, we exist in the in-between time. What are we going to do? Lock ourselves in a room until that day comes? That's not what Jesus had in mind. Before he ascended into heaven, he left a commissioning for us to follow during the in-between time until he comes again. In Matthew, that commissioning says, Jesus came and said to them, 
all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. In this in-between time, until Jesus comes again, we are the body of Christ, doing the tasks that Jesus commands us to do. We cannot sit by the empty tomb. We cannot be afraid and lock ourselves inside a room. We have an advantage the disciples did not have. Although Jesus told them many times how he must be put to death and in three days rise, the Sadducees and Pharisees heard him say that. But the disciples didn't really believe it until that Easter Sunday. We live on this side of that first Easter Sunday. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We are living in the in-between time. On that Saturday, the disciples were between death and sadness and life and hope. As Christians, as the body of Christ, we live in an in-between time, a time between our new life in baptism and eternal life at the end of our earthly life. And between those two times, as the body of Christ, we have work to do. Amen. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who by our sins are justly angered. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy and mighty, holy and merciful Savior, deliver, deliver us, us not, not into, into the bitterness, bitterness of eternal death. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers. But spare us, O Lord. Holy God, holy, holy and mighty, holy, holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitterness of eternal death. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy and, holy and merciful Savior, Deliver us not, not into, into the bitterness of eternal, eternal death. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, 
O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Dear Church, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace, and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.